we talk about all things medicine and all things life. I'm Dr. Hope and yeah, Karipo Nisama. So today we are going to talk about um, something that I think you've heard of before. Maybe you're not very well versed with it, but don't worry. Within this next, let's say, 20 minutes, you'll understand what we're talking about. So I'm sure you've heard about people saying you need to have an annual checkup every once a year or like a wellness screening. And that's the main focus today. So I've seen in the past where um, wellness is becoming a thing as we're going into preventative medicine. So in preventative medicine, so we basically advocate for you to find ways to prevent diseases so that you don't get the disease and blah, blah, blah. You know, there the spiral goes. So what should be entailed in an annual checkup or a wellness? So that's what we're talking about today because there are so many... Um, should I call them offers, not offers, but like packages out there that might not be specific to you or necessary or required for you, but you find yourself doing these packages in the name of a wellness. So um, an annual checkup is very important um, because you treat your body just like a car. Let's say you have a car, yeah? You really take care of your car. Your car is your baby and you make sure you service your car at least once or like twice every year, right? And that's the same way we should take care of our bodies. So the way you service your car is the same way you should have your body checked at least once a year just to check that everything is well and if there's something that's not going well, it's addressed immediately. So what we've noticed in healthcare is um, the earlier you detect something, the better, I mean, the more prepared you are to deal with it and most of the time the outcomes are greater than if it was detected um, when it's slightly more advanced. So um, wellness screenings and health checkups um are not one size fits all. So it may be, or rather it can be tailor-made to the individual. Um, maybe you have a specific disease and there's maybe a test that you need to have regularly, at least once a year. It can be tailored to a certain gender. Like for men, there's prostate, there's the prostate that we need to examine. For women, there's the cervix. And it can also be tailored to your insurance cover. So there are insurance covers that offer I mean, different limits, there's 10,000, there's 20,000. So that gives you a broad array of what you can have done um, if you are to have a wellness check. So I'll just start from the basic as we complicate it downwards. So basically, when you enter any hospital or you go for any uh, wellness checkup, it should start with a basic consultation and a physical exam. If you enter any doctor's office and they don't touch you, like physically touch you, please ask for your money back because all doctors are trained to have um, consultations, which is where we take history taking to find out why is it that you've come to see us and what's been going on and a physical examination where we examine your body. Like we literally touch your body, feel and touch to see what's going on. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing that you should have at least once a year is your vitals check. Um, vitals are your, they're warning signs for us as doctors, as medics. So your heart rate, your temperature, your, um, blood pressure and your what I said your heart rate your temperature your blood pressure and your respiratory rate and these days imagine we have the advantages of having wearables things such as smart watches things like your phones things like some of them are even able to detect what we call an ECG it shows how your heart is function how your heart is contracting um, and relaxing so let's take advantage of these wearables but also when you're having your um, annual wellness done it's good to Mm, sorry, it's good to have your vital screen as well because, I mean, things like high blood pressure are detected by um, elevated BPs. Um, things like a rapid pulse uh, shows that um, there's a possibility that your heart um, is not maybe like beating in the right way. So these are what we call warning signs. So they should be included in your annual checkup. The next thing we'll talk about is your BMI. Your BMI is your basal metabolic index. Um, in short, it's a uh, it, it's mostly your weight against your height. So just to see, to see if you're in a healthy weight. Um, these are, it normally has a point of contention just because there are people who have a high BMI but are considered healthy. But it's something that guides us in um, a healthy, ha, you are maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So we still use it and we refer to it a lot. So your BMI um, it can either be, it can either show your underweight, which is where some of us have been our whole lives, being underweight. <laughs> you know, when this carbon of yours is showing, but this is a bone when it's showing. People are like, oh my gosh, what's that? Anyway, so you can show your underweight. It can show you maintaining a normal weight. Um, it can show you overweight. And it can show you obese, which is um, above a certain value. So that's what your BMI will show to us. And it's good to have it done in your annual checkup. Um, something else, I'll keep referring just because I've written them down because they're quite, the list is quite um, extensive. 
is a urine examination. So your urine should be examined during your annual checkup, not just to tell you if you have a, U a UTI, which is a urinary tract infection, because this is common in women. Women get UTIs more frequently and um, you might have it done um, more than once in a year. But it's good to also check for it. Can, a urinalysis can tell you things such as early kidney disease. It can give you signs of diabetes. So that's why we actually um, rely on it or rather we advocate for it during an annual checkup. I want to point out something that in men, it's not very common to have a UTI in men. So when we can see, when we hear that there's a man who's having a UTI, we have to rule out a sexually transmitted infection. That was just a disclaimer, food for thought. Okay. Then the next um, test that we should consider is a full blood count or a total blood count. I'm sure we've all had this done before. If you've walked into the doctor's office and you have an infection, they tell you go and have a blood test done. More, most of the times it's a, a total blood count or what we call a full hemogram. So this not only detects um, infection, signs of infections, it also detects things such as um, anemia, which shows um, in layman's language that your blood, is, your blood levels are low. Um, it also detects uh, blood, ca it can show signs of blood cancer, it can show us bleeding disorders. So there are so many things that we can get from um, a full blood count. So that should be included in your annual checkup. Something else is um, we advocate that you know your blood group. So if you're going to go for an annual checkup and you don't know your blood group, please make sure it's done there. Your blood group is very important just because um, if uh, you are to need transfusion, it's, I mean, it fastens the process if we know your blood group. It fastens the process for us getting you um, the blood that you require. And these days, I even noticed, do you know your blood group is written in your smart um, driving license? Yeah, so that, I mean, if you have a road traffic accident and you're unresponsive and your ID is found, you're taken to the nearby facility, they're able to transfuse um, as soon as possible. Something, another test is blood sugar. Blood sugar is very important. Um, it tells us about your risk for getting diabetes. And also, if you have diabetes, it tells us, um, it can tell us how you've been progressing in terms of management. Uh, something else is, and blood sugar has different um, ways. There's uh, what we call a fasting blood sugar and a random blood sugar. So fasting blood sugar, you'd have to fast. Random is the one that you just take any time of the day. So they're different, but they, t they still show us how your um, sugars are being managed. Another thing is blood pressure. We've talked about that. Hypertension is when your bl blood pressure is elevated for a long period of time. So taking your blood pressure will tell us that um, either you have had high blood pressure or not. And um, there's a disclaimer here. I have gotten so many people who have been diagnosed with hypertension from one blood pressure reading. But um, that's not how you diagnose hypertension. It has to be done um, serially, so a number of times, at least three times, separated eight hours apart. So if you are, if you find that you have a elevated blood pressure, please repeat it at least eight time, at least eight hours apart for three times, and then that's when we'll be able to diagnose that you have um, elevated uh, that you have hypertension. So not one single reading can't be the diagnosis that you have hypertension. Sour, sour. Um, the other thing is cholesterol. Your blood. Um, cholesterol you know what cholesterol is that's another test that's very important for us um high blood cholesterol is a risk factor for us getting heart diseases and things also such as diabetes and hypertension so that's something that's actually good to check uh also your stool is an important factor so stool i know we've, we know that you can examine your stool for like worms and you know bacteria but when it comes to um, an annual screening would we'll be looking slightly at other things not just that so if any at any point there's blood in your stool, um, that's a red flag for us. So that those are some of the things we'll be looking at in your stool. So also another disclaimer, if you ever find that you have blood in your stool, please run. Please run to your next healthcare provider because that is a red flag for us. Blood in your stool can be signs of um either you have it can be signs of having a stomach bug. It can also be signs of having um, cancers in your abdomen, what we call your colon and your rectum. So that's why you see, we see if you have blood in your stool, kindly please go to your next healthcare provider. Also hemorrhoids, by the way, I'm sure you've heard of hemorrhoids or piles, they call them piles, can also present with like blood in stool. Then um, lastly, for the common things that we encourage that you have in your annual checkup is an STI screening. I've talked about STI screening so many times, but it's very important. Your HIV, your hepatitis, herpes, um, gonorrhea, syphilis, that's another thing to include in your annual checkup. So that's in general. So when you're going for an annual checkup, please ensure that those things are looked at. 
And then we can go a bit more specific. Now, as a man, as a woman, there are different things that we need to add to this list. Men, prostate cancer is um, something that we need to look out for. So having your PSC done, PSC is prostate-specific antigen. It's something that's produced um, excessively when you have prostate cancer. Um, also having what we call a digital rectal exam. Yes, where you have your a finger. <laughs> A finger is inserted into your, your bum hole and we feel your prostate. We feel your prostate for any changes that might be there because those can indicate that you have um, prostate cancer or what we call um, enlargement of your prostate. So that's why the, the digital exam is also important. Then in women, um, pap smears. Pap smears are very important and we encourage that you have at least one gynecology visit in a year just to ensure your reproductive system is in check. I won't go into detail there because that, that can be very long. Then something else is breast cancer screening. Very important. At least once a year. Yeah. And then also, oh, last thing. Um, if you haven't had your HPV, HPV vaccine done, please find time to do it. It's approved. They're readily available and very important because, you know, HPV is one of the major causes of um, cervical cancer. So that was, yeah, for gender, specific genders. And then now these specialized Specialized things, not poor like me who wear glasses. It's good to have your eyes checked at least once a year because your refractive error can change. You might need a new prescription and yeah, and also people who have cataracts, diabetics, people who are diabetic should have their eyes checked at least once a year. So these are other specialized um, situations or other um, tests that you may need to include in your annual checkup. Another thing is dental. It's good to have a dental appointment at least once a year just to make sure we're maintaining good oral hygiene. And let me tell you, there's no day you'll go to the dentist and you don't come out having had something done that you did not go there intending to do. So <laughs> go at least once a year. Because let me tell you, dentist costs are very expensive. Very expensive. So the more frequent you um, have these checkups, I mean, the cost will be lower because you're keeping things in check. And it's also an opportunity for them to educate you on oral health. Yeah. And then lastly... um. For specific ages, so like we say, for above the ages of 40, it's good to have um, screening for cancers at least once a year. So things like colorectal cancer screening, which we've talked about, it can be in your stool. Things are very common in men and women above the age of 45. Prostate cancer, we've talked about breast cancer. So these are specialized um, situations or tests that we'd also recommend um, for an annual checkup. Um, then I think I need to just point out just a few good to know things about an annual checkup. So the first thing is, um, for some of the tests, preparation is necessary. So you won't per se get accurate readings if you don't prepare beforehand and have the test done. So it's good to ask your practitioner or your health service provider, what preparation, um, methods or things do I need to focus on before I have this test done? Then something else is it's not one size fits all. As I said, there are specialized situations. It can be age. It can be you have a specific disease. It can be you have a familial predisposition. So these things, as um, it can change. You can have more tests than someone else would have just because you're more predisposed to getting a certain disease. Another thing is um, it's good to understand the importance of the tests and the, the procedures being done. So please ask these questions. Ask why you're doing the test. Um, what is it looking for? Things like that, just to get a better understanding of what is being done to you. Uh, something else is every annual checkup should end with a recommendation. So remember, you've taken your body for servicing. After you service your car, the mechanic tells you this, this and this needs to be worked on. So after you have your annual checkup, you should actually leave having recommendations um, suggested to you. If it's physical activity, if it's a certain diet. If it's um, having further investigations done because maybe something is not so clear, if it's any imaging that needs to be done. So some recommendations should be given to you before you leave. And then lastly, your insurance probably covers your annual checkup and you're not aware. So guys, please let's read our policies well, just to make sure we're getting the best and the most value from our policies. Um, hmm. A disclaimer, I've seen some, in some instances, People um, assume that you need to have some sorts of imaging done during an annual checkup. When I talk about imaging, I'm talking about things like um, a chest x-ray, things like a CT scan, things like an MRI. But these are specialized um, imaging modalities and they are not recommended in an annual health checkup. But if anything is found that needs further investigation with these um, 
tests, then it'll be recommended to you. So you don't have to have you don't have to do it every 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 single year. Yes. Um then I think that's it. And I just want to point out that so many I think all most, if not all, health service providers offer annual health screenings. It's just up to you to do your due diligence and just look around and see which one is offering the best to you. There are even some that come to your house. Like, I'll come to your house and do this um, evaluation for you. You don't have to leave your comfort space. So please, let's be keen on these things. Even as we start the new year, please purpose to have an annual health checkup done. It's the only way we can keep in check and ensure that we are maintaining the best health that we can. So yeah, that was today's video. I know it was, it was very <laughs> heavy. But I think it's something that's good to know. And yeah, I'm sure you've learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Feel free to reach out. We're here to answer your questions and to help where we can best. So be sure to like, to comment, to share, to subscribe. Have I missed any? I don't know if I've missed any. But yeah, that's it for today. Bye.